have two um, like size objects hitting each other. Okay, hold on. This is one of my favorite games, right? Billiards. This one is going forward. Okay, now that's two dimensions, right? So we've actually done this a little bit in, in uh, chapter nine, right? Two objects sitting and moving. But in that case, we didn't worry about rolling motion. We just, uh, we just did like as if they're sliding, they hit each other and they go like that. This one is actually rolling and hitting. Or you could have, this one is going forward, <laughs> okay? This one is going to clobber that one, okay? How about this one? This one gave it, went, uh, got a big back kick, didn't it? Is it possible for it to go backward? It's, it's not really, unless unless I go like this. Yeah, then it goes back, right? If they're coming towards each other, yeah, then it goes back. This guy's the big guy, right? But not always. Ah, now I could do this way. Oh, that's a big kick here. Okay. Okay, so basically what's going on with the physics of that? You can have different objects, different shapes. Okay, actually this is the same, same shape, but different size. This is different size and different shape, okay? So how would we approach that? <clears throat> Did it fall somewhere? Where's my third sphere go? Did it fall here? Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. I, I didn't want it to go in the sink. Okay, so rolling objects colliding. Now with this one, what ends up happening, <clears throat> let's say it's like two different size. What ends up happening is that the angular momentum of the collision is not conserved. The, only the linear momentum and uh, kinetic energy is conserved. So I'm going to do rolling objects colliding elastically. So assume that they collide in such a way that they bounce off each other and they conserve kinetic energy. Uh, so P initial equals P final, K initial equals K final. The angular momentum is not equal to L final. So the linear, uh, the angular momentum is not conserved. The reason why angular momentum is not conserved is because when they're colliding, right at the point where they collide, there's a friction force between them and the ground, right, Fs. As a matter of fact, the, the reason that they're rolling is because the friction allows them to roll, right? So there's a friction. When this hits this one, this one hits this one, and uh, the friction Re, uh, reverses, I believe the friction is this way, like that. And then uh, when this one hits this one, gives it a kick like that, the friction on this one is this way. So the friction on both objects tries to prevent the effect of the other one, right? This one hits this one at an angle, this one hits this one, right? So this one gives this one a forward kick, so the friction tries to prevent that forward kick. This one gives this one a backward kick, and the friction tries to prevent that backward kick. So the friction acts like an external force on the system during that collision period, okay? 
During that collision period, the friction acts as an external force, so therefore there's an external torque on the system. There's an external torque, and the external torque causes the angular momentum to not be conserved. Remember, the only way the angular momentum is conserved is if uh, external torque on the system equals change in angular momentum of the system divided by change in time. So the, on, the only way the angular momentum of a system is conserved if, is if during the collision, external forces can be ignored. But in this case, they can't be ignored because the friction on the table acts as an, as an external uh, torque. Okay? So the external torque on the system is not zero, equals, uh, equals not zero, therefore angular momentum is not conserved. But the external force on the system, Fs and Fs, okay, the external force on the system is, is zero. You see? Fs cancels Fs. Fs this way, Fs this way. So the total force due to the uh, Fs is zero. Therefore, linear momentum is still conserved. F external equals dp dt. So if this is equal to zero, therefore the momentum is conserved. So momentum is conserved, but the, to uh, the angular momentum isn't. So all that to say, when you do this kind of problem, only conserve linear momentum and uh, uh, kinetic energy. Okay, so the way you do that is uh, let's let's give it some numbers here. Let's say you have a sphere, a solid sphere, rolling forward at a velocity of uh, let's say it's uh, two kilograms, three meters per second, and then let's say this one is a uh, kind of like the demonstration I did. Let's say it's a hollow cylinder. Let's say it's uh, three kilogram and it's moving forward at one meter per second. So I can ask the question, what is the final velocity of both after the collision? And omega final of both after collision. I, I need to give you the radius too, right? The radius of this one, let's say, is uh, <clears throat> 0.4 meters. The radius of this one is 0.6 meters. So the way to do this then is to just conserve linear momentum and kinetic energy. So P initial equals P final. So we have uh, 2 times 3 plus the, uh, this one is the mass is 3 kilograms times uh, 1. That's the initial momentum of the system. Is equal to the final velocity. Uh, of each one, right? So we can say 2v1 plus 3v2. Each one has a certain velocity after the collision. 2v1 plus 3v2. So this, this one is going to be 6 plus 3, 9. 9 is equal to 2v1 plus 3v2. And then we conserve their kinetic energy. Now, in conserving their kinetic energy, you have to conserve their total kinetic energy. Translation, rotation. Translation, rotation. So what's nice to do here is to do this. Half m1 uh, v1 squared plus half i1 omega 1 squared. This is the sphere. The cylinder is half m2 omega v2 squared plus half I2 omega 2 squared. 
is, uh, is equal to kinetic final. So in other words, what 